Today I want to talk about how business travel unexpectedly helped me become more independent and confident doing things alone. If you're someone who struggles with doing things alone or dealing with social anxiety, like me, this story is especially for you. I've been single for most of my adult life, which honestly, it felt and can feel pretty isolating at times. Especially when I was living in the Bay Area where it seems like at that point in my life, everyone around me was coupling up. You know that feeling when your roommates all have partners and your friend group is rapidly pairing off? Yeah, it can leave you feeling like the perpetual third wheel or just not really a priority to anyone anymore. Let me be totally transparent with you guys. I deal with some pretty serious anxiety, especially social anxiety. I also struggle with depression and ADHD with high rejection sensitive dysphoria. For those who don't know what that means is basically putting myself in situations where I don't know anyone stresses me out big time. Like heart racing, palm sweating, hoping the earth will swallow me whole in that moment kind of stress. But then something unexpected happened. I landed a job at this tech company. We're talking over a thousand employees in that early stage. And suddenly travel became part of my job description. Now, I've been to Tijuana a few times in college, but let's be real. Those quick trips weren't exactly giving me the full international experience. If you know what I mean. My first real international business trip was to London. And let me tell you, it changed everything, but not in the way you might expect. See, I was still really new in this job. And since one third of the company at the time worked remotely, I barely knew anyone. So talk about being thrown into the deep end. So here's where things get interesting. Despite being completely jet lagged, Time zones are no joke and going from the west coast of the US to London was a bit. But I had this burning desire to make the most of my time there. At this point in my life, I was really into running half marathons, so I packed running gear that I used. Little did I know that deciding to go running through the streets of London would be my first step towards real independence. Quick pro tip for any runners watching, signing up for races in different cities is one of the best ways to get a tour of the place. Sure, you might be focused on your pace, but trust me, you'll see so much more than you would from a tour bus. But here's what I didn't realize at the time. That simple act of going running by myself was actually building this tiny seed of confidence. Every time I stopped to take photos or would just appreciate where I was, I was actually practicing being comfortable with my own company. The real breakthrough came when I decided to buy a ticket to see Motown in London. Because I mean, come on, it's London. I had to go see a show. First, my brain went into overdrive with all the usual anxious thoughts. What will people think? Is it weird to go alone? But then I had this moment of clarity. It's a show. You're literally supposed to sit quietly and watch. Why did I need someone else there for that? Yes, I was definitely on a budget, but I made it work. Also, having Uber available at the time and speaking the language, because it was English, definitely helped me feel braver. Here's the thing. I knew I might never get this chance again, and I refused to let being alone stop me from experiencing it. That London trip was just the beginning. Work started sending me to all these amazing places. Hawaii, my second time, but first time solo. Paris, New York, Portland. Each trip became an opportunity to push myself a little further. I even went to Nashville on my own at one point. In Nashville, I didn't just run the rock and roll half marathon alone. I booked my own hotel, planned my own itinerary, and really owned my solo experience. Sure, I met up with an old college friend, Kayla, and her husband for dinner one night, which was amazing, but the rest of the time it was just me discovering the city on my own terms. Let me tell you about this massive mindset shift I had. I was sitting alone at this 
hotel in New York, having my usual internal freak out about what people might be thinking when it hit me. Men do this all the time and nobody bats an eye, y'all. That realization was like a lightning bolt to my feminist soul. And maybe that's also how I ended up moving to New York because I had this epiphany there, but who knows? Conversation to have in therapy, I suppose. Why was I making such a big deal about something that men do every single day without a second thought? That was the moment I started finding real pride in my solo adventures. Once that mental block was on, there was no stopping me. Music festivals? Check. Food festivals? Check. I even went to Bay Chella by myself. Technically, Kat was there, but we didn't find out until we saw each other post on social. I stayed with people I met in a Facebook group. I explored the polo grounds completely on my own terms. Let me tell you, being able to come and go exactly when you want at a festival, game changer. These days, I'm that girl you'll see at the bar or a restaurant with a book in hand. I've even turned it into a whole Instagram series, calling it Books and Booze. Sometimes it's non-alcoholic because your girl loves a good coffee and it's the middle of the day, I probably am not drinking, just to be fair, unless I'm on a plane. Now I want to share some real practical tips for anyone wanting to build their solo confidence. One, start small. Seriously, there's no need to jump straight into international travel. Try going to a movie alone, or spending an hour at a coffee shop with a good book or podcast. Two, remember that literally no one's paying attention to you the way you think they are. Everyone's too wrapped up in their own world to notice what you're doing. Practice positive self-talk instead of, this is so awkward. Try, I am giving myself the gift of this experience, which is how I've been approaching all these networking events I'm going to. Four, document your solo adventures. It helps you see your progress and it'll build confidence over time. But as a resident, extremely online girl, join online communities of other solo adventures. Trust me, you're not alone in wanting to do things independently. So listen, I get it. The fear is real. Especially if you deal with social anxiety like I do. But I promise you, starting small and building up your confidence slowly works. I'm living proof. Right now, I'm planning to attend the Liberty Parade solo because, hey, life happens. One friend is having a baby and the other one is dog sitting because his friend A is having a baby. And you know what? gonna be totally fine. If any part of the story resonated with you, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel or share it with someone you think would like it. I'd also love to hear your own tips for building confidence and doing things alone. So drop them in the comments below. Remember, you only get one life. Don't let being solo stop you from living it.